Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part nine of building a real working exosuit. So as you can see, I've got a fair way along with this. Um, I can almost walk along, and last time I did, even though the motors don't even work. And this project's much easier to walk in than my previous Hulkbuster series. It's actually carrying quite a bit of load already, but the whole thing supports itself. Um, and today we're gonna work on actually motorizing the legs to give me a bit of leg lift when I go to take those steps. So in the previous episodes, we've done quite a lot of gearbox development. We've done some work on the arm and I've got one axis of the arm on my back now for the big rotary axis to bring an arm around. And the whole thing is gonna have loads of accessories on so as well as one motorized power arm. It's gonna have Nerf guns and all those things and lots of cosmetics. So don't forget to check back on those previous episodes, but let's get right on with how we're going to get those legs motorized. Yes, the majority of this is made of wood. There's a bit of aluminium here and some steel and some steel tubing, and it's also made of 3D prints. And this means I can save a lot of money to build this prototype and get it working. So it is quite crude. The main thing is the 3D printed gearboxes and all this paracord pulling the joints up on blocks and tackles, which means it takes the load off the 3D printed gears, then nylon prints, which are really tough. But basically it means I can complete this on a budget and see if the concept works. I've got these foot sticks, which I'm currently pulling the legs along when I'm walking. And uh, we have got a motor in each leg, which will lift the leg up. So the plan is as I take steps, I pull against this and that switches the motor on, pulls it up to an amount and puts it back again. So the plan is gonna be to take a metal tube like this to put on here. We'll probably put a rubber coating on this or a bit of tape or something. So as I lift my foot, it pulls the tube up, but I'm still pulling against metal. And then we'll just have a switch for now on top that gets pulled as the tube pulls up so it knows whether I'm pulling up or not. I've made a 3D printed bracket and a stopper here. So that should be fine. The next thing we need is some position feedback. So we've got two joints here and as the suit moves, one gets bigger and one gets smaller. And obviously when the leg lifts, they both get smaller. So we need to, to measure both of those joints and uh, be able to give feedback to the system. So I would just stick something on the outside here, measuring this angle and measuring this angle, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to put something that measures the angle. It's very similar to what I did on Robot X that fits in the middle here. And uh, obviously as the thing expands, this angle changes and it measures with this potentiometer that rotates. So it gives me exactly the same measurement. And we're going to put one above and one below and the same on the other leg. That's both sides in. I've just built a little board with an Arduino Pro Mini on that's reading those analog pots in. So they've got five volts and ground on and a wire each goes to A0 and A1 on the Arduino and we can see the results. Right, I've just written a little bit of code here that reads in the two analog pots, adds them together and puts it out to the serial terminal. So we should find that um, as I move this and backwards and forwards, as one's getting bigger and one's getting smaller, the answer doesn't change very much. Okay, it does change a little bit. That's probably just due to the geometry of it but um, it's pretty much over a thousand. There's not too many issues there. And it shouldn't change until I push down on this, at which point they both get smaller. And that should give me a lower and lower number there we can see, which is definitely different. So we can now use that position to position the legs as I lift them up. So it knows how far to go when I pull the switch. Nearly there. Right, so a couple of changes and additions. I found, of course, when I took my foot off the pegs at the bottom um, to bring the leg down, in fact, my foot came away from it and it wasn't attached anymore and everything went wobbly. So I need to redevise that probably with an analog pressure sensor. But for now, I've moved that switch and I've put it here. And that's actually measuring the cord tension. So that's working out when the motor shouldn't unwind anymore, which means this must be at the top. I'm still using the pots at the bottom to work out when it's sort of pulled up to the maximum amount and this when it shouldn't unwind anymore. So now to actually control the leg, I'm using this, which is an analog stick, which basically means I can control the speed and everything with my hand, and I've got one on each side. As I say, eventually I will actually go back and do a foot switch, but I need a proper coupling for my foot really to hold it in there and sense how fast and how hard I'm pulling. Right, so it's pretty responsive. But can I walk in it?
Well, it would appear the answer is basically yes. Um, sometimes I forget to operate my, my robot legs with my thumbs, so I probably do need some sort of pressure sensor. Plus, I feel I want my feet a bit tighter in those pegs, so there's not so much gap between the floor and everything when they're down. But apart from that, it's great. It's actually much easier to walk in than my Hulkbuster suit, and it stands up by itself, so when I'm finished, I can just walk away and it carries on standing there which is really, really good. There we go, completely freestanding. Right, so here's my shoe that's a bit worn out that I wear for doing robot things in case it gets crushed or it gets paint or glue on or something. So I need to pad this out a bit, I think, so my foot's pinned down, it doesn't come off. So I think I'm just gonna wrap foam around it. I've got some of that grippy stuff on for dashboards, uh, but we'll just carry on bulking that out. That's better. So that feels much more controllable. The only thing I want to do now is get my hips locked in because they're quite loose in here. And I really want this to lean with my hips rather than me leaning inside and being all loose. So I'm just going to put a bit of padding in here somewhere just so when I lean, the suit actually leans. And of course, when doing so, the top of this should stay upright, but you can see that um, probably I'm leaning side to side when I shouldn't be. So we need to just sort that out. Yep, it's just blocks of foam for now. I don't want to strap myself in, although I will eventually because I won't have the handles to hold on to. But for now, I want to be able to escape if it all goes wrong. So there's no waist belt, just me uh, pushing on here to push side to side. As you saw there, I've got these rotational axis that allow me to uh, bring the legs outwards so I can walk in a curve and turn on the spot. I just wanted to add that this is actually really heavy. I don't think I can pick all this up in one go. Um, it's really awkward, but it's actually really heavy, mainly owing to what's on the back here. And of course, we've got more mass to come in the form of the arm and various cosmetics, including rocket launchers and all of those things. However, all that's currently powering it is a two amp hour radio control LiPo battery, which um, costs about 10 quid and there's really hardly any mass to it at all. Uh, nothing like an engine or a compressor or anything like that for hydraulics or pneumatics. So obviously I can just swap this out when it goes flat and it's not too much trouble and it's really cheap. So there's no fuel to put in and no exhaust fumes. This is the motor driver and this is the motor. So look back on the earlier episodes to see how I've got the force out of this. It spins really fast, but it's geared down with this 3D printed gearbox. And then we've got the uh, blocks and tackles pulling paracord to pull the legs up basically. So that's it. But um, obviously it's really simplistic, it's really low power, and it's made of really cheap off-the-shelf parts, which means I can easily finish the project for not very much money. I'm really happy I've got a viable walking platform to build the arm on, and if you remember we actually started saying we just build one power arm, then I realised it was going to be massively heavy and it needed something to carry it, so we had an audience vote to see if we wanted legs or wheels. Of course everyone voted for legs, and that brings us to where we are today. So next time I'm going to be building out from the shoulder, we've got one axis here, so we need the other two as I said. We'll get those working, rebuild the elbow, we're going to build a control system which is a four axis floating joystick to control that arm, once that works, we can return to our foot pressure switches to see how the whole thing handles with the load on, strap myself in, build the proper leg control system, and there we go. And after that, we can just bling it out with cosmetics and all sorts of armoured shields and things. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. You should also check out my Patreon campaign, which is how most of my projects are funded. Look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. You should also check out my t-shirt store for xrobots merchandise. Have a look at the links in the description to this video. Alright, that's all for now.